Hey, welcome once again to NASA at Home Spaceport Series. I'm your host, Joshua Santora, and we are continuing our Artemis Week. I'm joined by a very special guest, Chris Cianciola. Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. Well, I sure appreciate you having us, Joshua. I can't wait to uh, share what, we, what, what we're doing with SLS and the Artemis program and uh, about the good things that are coming your way. Hey, before we jump into it, I want to give you guys a quick look at some of the excitement around the Space Launch System. All right, right, super, super exciting, exciting stuff. stuff. You'll have to I'll forgive me. It sounds like I'm echoing, I'm having some echo on my audio. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let Chris do most, most of the talking today. today. So, so Chris, Chris, as the deputy program manager for SLS, tell us about, about what you do and kind of what your, what your role looks like these days getting ready for Artemis One. Oh, today oh, we are still uh, in the throes of completing the, the build of this uh, system. Uh, hardware is coming off the lines and from across the country from our different uh, contractor teams. Uh, we're still finishing up the last pieces of our uh, design verification and certification, and the team is just really excited. It's all coming together. We worked really, really hard over the uh, over the last year or so. I spent a lot of time with the team uh, building our core stage uh, uh, down at the SHU assembly facility and uh, finishing that and getting it ready to go and out and delivered as we move on to our uh, next step over at Stennis. But it's been really exciting times, and... Uh, really is coming together. Yeah, so we talk about this is the, I've heard this called the most powerful rocket. Uh, are, are we talking about the most powerful rocket on Earth in history? Um, what does that mean, the most powerful? So when you talk about that, you, we measure uh, thrust in, uh, in pounds force off the launch pads, and uh, we're at 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust as we leave the pad. And just to give you a, a kind of a sense of the magnitude, it's in the class of the Saturn V, and actually it's 15% more thrust uh, than Saturn V had off the pad. When you compare it to the other, the other rockets out there today, this is the only rocket that will give us the capability to, to take the Orion spacecraft and the crew uh, that leaves Earth orbit. So uh, that's quite exciting. And, and how do we get to that much power? Because obviously, like, we had an enormous rocket with the Saturn V. The space shuttle was a beast to deploy what it did into low Earth orbit. So how are we getting that much more energy out of this guy? So it, it's, it's all about the propulsion systems we have. Uh, we start, uh, and you can see, and this is a, uh, a cutaway view of the, of the rocket itself. And you see the spacecraft on top. But we start with our solid rocket boosters. They burn for the first two and a half, two minutes or so right off the pad. And in the center, you see what we call is our core stage. It's powered by four RS-25 engines uh, that will take us, that will take us all the way uh, to Earth orbit. And on top of that, uh, power in the spacecraft will separate from the core stage. And we have the, the ICPS is what we call it, the, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage that will give the final kick uh, for Orion to leave Earth orbit and head to the moon. So that's where we are. And if you look at the top, you'll see the, the systems of the uh, Orion spacecraft. I think they're coming on later this week and they'll talk more about their activity. Yeah, so Chris, uh, so forgive me. Uh, I think you're shaking your your laptop a little bit. If you can just be oh, careful. Lord, I'm sorry. You're, you're wiggling the, the, the camera, that's quite all right. No big deal. Um, but I did want to ask you, it sounds like that core stage, the, the lower end of that rocket is getting us into low Earth orbit, and it seems like you alluded to that upper part of the rocket as getting us to the moon. Can you explain more about the process of kind of after we launch, what's happening with that rocket as we stage um, through the pieces? Uh, so let's just start at, at T0, right? You go from the launch. I'm sorry, I'm, keep, I'm standing up and hitting the table. <laughs> Try to stay away from it. Um, we start the four RS-25 engines, all right, and we get them up to full thrust, and then at that point, we'll We'll, we'll kick the boosters on at T0, and we'll be going. So at, at the start of the mission, we'll have four RS-25s going. 
and the SRBs. SRBs will separate about two minutes in, into the flight, and the core stage will propel us on up to that point with the four RS-25s. At that point, uh, we're basically in, in low Earth orbit, and uh, we'll separate from the uh, core stage, and it's everything above what you see here is the launch vehicle stage adapter. The ICPS will kick in and uh, take over. There's an initial burn, and then there's the circularized orbit, and then there's a final burn that will uh, that will send us on to the moon. So then, the, and the ICPS is powered by a single RL10 engine uh, from Aerojet Rocket Nine. Awesome, cool. Can you explain? Obviously, we're talking about a 2021 launch for Artemis One, which is incredibly exciting. Um, but as we look towards that, there are a lot of pieces coming together quickly. Um, so can you help us understand where is everything today? Because my understanding is that most of these pieces exist and they're built. Uh, it's just a matter of getting everything finalized, finished, tested, and together. And I have a video here I'm going to roll. If you could just kind of walk through the pieces. There's so many pieces, uh, but what are we looking at here? And, and again, where, where are they at and, and how far are they from KSC? All right, so we'll talk about that as we go through. Obviously, uh, the first part of this is Orion, and then we're, I'll be talking about the pieces from Space Launch System. Low. So this is these are some of the pieces of Orion. You'll see that that uh, the launch board system is complete. This is a crew and service module. Uh, it's recently completed testing at Plumbrook, and it's now back at the Kennedy Space Center. So one here, of the are, here we start seeing uh, pieces of the uh, SLS vehicle. This is a Ryan stage adapter. It's at KSC, ICPS, it's at KSC currently. And here's the launch vehicle stage adapter. It's completing uh, outfitting here at Marshall and will be headed uh, your way in a, in a couple of months. The RS-25s are completed, tested, and now installed on the core stage, as you see here. In the core stage, this was uh, completing at MAF, and it's now at Stennis. So you see it loaded into the B-2 test stand. And the solid rocket motor segments are complete, and uh, we're actually in the process of loading those on rail cars for shipment next month to Kennedy Space Center. So uh, that's kind of a quick overview, uh, and you see all the pieces of hardware as they are completed uh, and as they're coming together. Yeah, that's uh, you keyed on a couple, are keyed on a couple really important things there. KSC, um, we love being a major part of the Artemis program. All we like to say, all roads lead to us before we get to the moon, uh, just because that's where we launch from. So all those pieces, like Chris was saying, are headed this way. We're excited for that. Uh, you you mentioned this, the MAF, the Michoud Assembly Facility, I believe, um, and that core stage headed to Stennis. It's there now, and I I keep hearing this term, the Green Run, and hopefully our viewers have heard of the Green Run. Uh, what is that, and why is it so important? Oh, absolutely. So this will be uh, this will be the first time this stage has been uh, tested together from from uh, the core stage itself, uh, top to bottom, with the cryogenic uh, fuel, with the hydrogen and the oxygen. Um, we'll test the avionic systems, the flight computers, and the timing and the integration with the flight software to see how all that comes together. We we have a philosophy. We we go by, it's called test like you fly. So we want to demonstrate uh, everything that this this rocket is going to see for the first launch is to demonstrate it on the ground. So for the core stage, this is the first time we'll do it. So we'll, we're going to, we'll kind of slowly walk our way into it. We'll, we'll do a system power up with all the electronics and, and verify that all works. Then we'll move into what we call a wet dress rehearsal where basically it's, it's a tanking test where we tank uh, the vehicle test for leaks and, and see how all that works. And then after that, uh, we complete that, we'll go into the green run test, which is a, basically it's a full firing, full duration firing of, of the rocket um, and to, to do a shakedown. And with that test, we're gonna learn things about uh, do, did all our predictions relative to the propulsion system and the timing, did that all work as, as projected? And if something is off, we want to be able to catch it here on the ground and, and fix it and adjust before flight. So testing the vehicle, the valves, the facility, the software, the controllers, the avionics, uh, everything together for the first time. It's really exciting, and that's, that's going to be a big deal. So 
the, uh, the core stage is at Dennis now, and the team is preparing for that test, and we'll be working that over the summer. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I don't want to remiss uh, or be remiss in the fact that I didn't mention that you actually, I believe you work at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Is that correct? I do. I do work at Marshall. That's yeah. right. Didn't want to didn't want to leave you guys out. Obviously, you guys are a huge part of the Artemis program. Um, so big thanks to Marshall. We did have a question come in from Social. Uh, what do we hope to gain from the Moon to get to Mars? So kind of as we look as we head to the Moon with our eyes on Mars, what are we gaining in that in that process? Oh, that, that's a very good question, right? We we uh, we need to, to we're going to to make this sustainable. We need to learn how to live on the moon right not just to visit so uh we want to work to work through that and we're testing out from our standpoint we're having we're preparing the launch vehicle and we'll be working that but it's all the systems involved from the crew systems from the spacecraft to the landing systems to eventually the systems that will demonstrate on the moon where we can um have take advantage of in situ resources and things like that so uh it's the whole logistic system that will support the team that's working the mission who's living on the moon etc awesome I'm yeah still dark, dark. we're still here yep and uh like chris said earlier in the show thursday we'll talk about the orion um, program on friday we'll talk a little bit about that in situ resource utilization on our friday show um, last question for you chris obviously as a as a leader in this program i'm sure that you are just just the excitement is just almost uncontrollable at this point when we get to launch day where are you going to be and and what are you going to be looking for the most oh i um, i will uh i will be with the uh, the launch team on uh the day of launch um uh, and i'm just super excited to be part of this uh i'll go back and and as a as a child i, I was fortunate i had i had a parents who were uh all excited about uh, the space uh, things that were going on in, in part of their generation and, and they took me to actually see the launch of Apollo 11 and, and that's been imprinted in my mind and in my career and through my life is just, just one of the exciting times and just now to be part of that as part of the Artemis generation I'm so excited to see us going back to the moon with the first woman and the next man it's, it's just exciting times awesome yeah and obviously the space launch system is the ride that will get us there. So Chris, appreciate you joining us and that's gonna do it for us today. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for your time, we appreciate it. Absolutely, and I uh, wanna sign off reminding you to tune in tomorrow at one o'clock. We're gonna talk about KSC and how we've prepared as a space center to be ready for the Artemis program, reminding you that even the sky isn't the limit. Thank you, Joshua.